So I've been investing here actually for 30 years now, and a lot has changed, a lot has developed. Uh, my first deal, I think, was MicroFocus back in 1990. It's become a very big company now. Um, did compilers for us when I was there, uh, C compilers at the time. Invested in hardware, software, web, internet. Seen all the various growth phases of Europe. And Europe has developed into a real ecosystem now where I think there were very few investors. Um, it was not very popular to become an entrepreneur in those days. And now I think everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. So everything changed. Yeah, I think exactly what you said. The, um, the ecosystem has matured now and, and we can see that the best and brightest from, uh, from Europe want to be entrepreneurs. They want to join startup companies. And, uh, and technology is not something that you know, people find very exotic. It has become the, uh, the center of attention and I think that uh, it, it bodes well for the, uh, for the future of uh, entrepreneurship in Europe. If we look at the story of Ireland, there were no big companies, there was no big military to join, there's no big government to join. So people looked to the US, to Boston especially, and became entrepreneurs. I think throughout Europe people feel joining a big company and doing a job for 30 years, it's not going to happen anymore. In fact, people don't do that anymore. So why not become an entrepreneur? So part of its social changes in the whole way corporations are constructed, there are no big jobs like that and people don't want to do them. They want to have multiple different gigs in their life. It all feeds into what makes great entrepreneurs. Right, and more recently, a number of European entrepreneurs have become role models for the young generations. People who, like Daniel Ek, the founder of Spotify, or Niklas Zenstrom, the founder of Skype. Ricardo Zacconi. Uh, Ricardo Zacconi, the founder of Zacconi. Fabio Spianchi. All these people who um, have managed to create companies are long-lasting companies that have reached global domination for the, in their uh, sectors have become um, uh, world models that did not exist 20 years ago. A world model 20 years ago was the CEO of a big company, was a politician, was a movie star, but not necessarily an entrepreneur. And remember today that many of them come from Southern Europe. I mentioned Fabio, but also Federico Marchetti, Jose Neves, who would have thought the Italians and Latins, other Latins are the top entrepreneurs in Europe today. They're joining the ranks of everybody else. Tech investment um, took a beating, quite frankly, between 2001 and 2006. Then we had a brief in Europe. Then there was a brief, um, a brief revival of tech investing for a couple of years. But since 2009, um, there has been a, a really disaffection from the, uh, at least from a capital market point of view. Um, you know, big family offices, institutional investors would not invest in, in capital markets when it came to tech. So that was something that people would stay away from. I think we have just seen the return of those uh, players in the markets. And I think it's very, uh, very important to have that, that vibrant environment that would take the companies from a, a, you know, a group of initial uh, venture capital investors, um, angel investors throughout their lifeline through the, you know, without losing the, uh, the, the company itself, the life of the company. A company that can provide its early investors with a form of exit, so that they, and, but continue its life, is, uh, is very important to create this ecosystem of large, established tech companies that were lacking in Europe until now. So I'm very hopeful that we're going to see in the next five to ten years a, um, a large number of independent companies that will stay independent in Europe instead of being acquired by their U.S. counterparts like they have been acquired in the past 25 years. We've both been involved in business education worldwide and it's interesting to see that the new generation of entrepreneurs believes in management science, reading the right books, going to the right seminars, doing the right self-help in order to blueprint and create their cultures and institutions along the world-class lines. Some are American, some are European, some of the models are European too, of world-class companies. How do you build a team? How do you motivate that team? What do you do about culture? Uh, what do you do about goal setting? And how ambitious can you be? And I think Europe doesn't give up anything to any other uh, region on that basis today. Also, access to best practices. Um, <clears throat> Fifteen years ago, the, um, there was a huge gap in understanding the best management uh, practices whether it was you know, software development, product management, 
um, people management, organizational management, there was a, a gap of sometime, you know, up to five years before a proven uh, best practice would, would filter down from the US to Europe. Now what we are finding is that it's almost instant. And that, uh, so the best practices in management and, and how to grow a, a, a long lasting tech company is now you know, totally integrated in the culture of European companies. Who would have thought a company like Spotify, which espouses these great manage management practices, comes out of Stockholm, is the biggest music company in the world by many measures. Sweden has no natural market, but it's the chosen one by kids all over the world. So that's how Europeans are building companies today. It's even more remarkable to think about Spotify that the product management and product development practices are now the best practice copied by a large number of startup companies across the world, all over Europe, but also in the US. So they have become a trends, you know, not only a market leader in their own market, but from a business, uh, business uh, practice point of view, they also have become a world leader. Yeah, I think they need to unleash their ambition. They need, uh, you know, the European upbringing tends to really um, lower or, or suppress the, uh, the level of ambition. Value that, security uh, too much, have. yeah. And, uh, and we, need to, we need to encourage uh, people to do that. So role models are very important for that. But there's a role from the investors also to help them uh, take risk and accept risk as part of the culture of the enterprise. While I was born in the UK and lived in France, luckily I spent so many years in the US that this whole idea that if you fail, it's a black mark and you can't get up again, that was, it never existed in me. So it's very important for people to just get up and do it again. Failure is actually exalted in the US. Uh, you can even be president sometimes. So, um, and you get up and you dust yourself off and you start again and you learn something by it. And Europeans increasingly, I think, will adopt that attitude.